Hi, my name is Ava. I'm 15 years old. I would like to share with you a story about a relationship I was in. There will be no happy ending, but I hope that my experience will be useful for other girls who find themselves in a similar situation. This story is about how my boyfriend used me to feed his hungry ego. I met him at a party that my high school friend Emma threw. Emma is a sociable, energetic, and straightforward girl who's easy to hang out with. She invited me to her birthday party where I met my future boyfriend. However, at that moment, he was Emma's boyfriend. But I did not steal him from my friend. She was more than happy to give him to me. This guy's name was Martin. And you know, he was the star of this party. He was cute and very active. He made funny jokes, making everybody laugh. He danced really cool and fooled around with the microphone, singing some kind of stupid karaoke songs. And I liked him a lot from the moment I saw him. I approached Emma and shyly asked her to introduce us. Emma giggled strangely and said that he was her boyfriend, but if I liked him, I could take him and she would be happy to get rid of him. I thought it was a joke and even laughed politely, although in reality Emma's words sounded so strange that I felt awkward and decided to leave the party as fast as possible. But I did not get far. It started raining, and as I looked for my umbrella, I realized that I had left it at Emma's house. I had to go back, and it was there that I witnessed a very strange scene. Emma stood in the doorway and shouted at Martin, Get out! I never, never want to see or hear you again. Leave me alone! After that, Emma went back into the house, and Martin left. When he passed me, his face seemed wet, not from rain, but from tears. He did not even notice me. After that day, Emma and I almost lost touch for some reason, so I did not feel constrained by my friendship with her anymore and decided to make a move on Martin. I found him on Facebook and sent him a private message. He replied, and we started writing to each other. We didn't have a lot of common ground for conversation, but Martin was more than happy to talk about himself, and I was happy to listen to him. Soon we went out in real life and started a relationship. I simply adored Martin. I could never imagine that guys who were ready to devote every minute of their free time to their girlfriend even existed. Every school day we went for a walk together after classes. We spent all of our weekends together. And in the evenings we texted each other until late at night. I was very glad that Martin enjoyed spending time with me. And when he told me that I was a hundred times better than his ex, I was honestly really flattered. I always thought Emma was cool, but I was even cooler. I was almost happy, and at first I did not realize this perfect relationship also had a dark side. I was getting tired. Because of our texting until 3 a.m., I was always sleepy. I even began to fall asleep during my classes, which caused problems at school. All my friends, one by one, got offended by me because I did not spend time with them anymore. But I just couldn't hang out with them. When I went somewhere with my friends, Martin always called me or texted me. And if I didn't answer, he would get very upset and say something like, he knew that I didn't need him at all. But that wasn't true. I tried to explain. We'd argue. And then Martin would be sad for a few days and complain that he had headaches. I felt guilty and sorry for him. In fact, I felt guilty all the time. It seemed that I was always doing something wrong and causing him terrible heartache. Sometimes I could not even enjoy taking a bath because Martin texted me nonstop, and if I didn't answer right away, he would call and tell me with pain in his voice that apparently he was not good enough for me. Oh, how tired I was. Sometimes Martin started to annoy me, but then I pictured in my head how my boyfriend was laying on his bed curled up and unhappy because of me. I felt so sorry for him that I tried to fix everything over and over again. But my patience finally ran out. It was late in the evening one night. I was terribly sleepy. And the next morning, there was an important English test at school. Martin would not leave me alone. So at some point, I just wrote, Good night, turned off the sound on my smartphone, and went to bed.
in the morning, there were about 50 texts from Martin on my phone saying that obviously my love for him had passed and that he lost the best thing he ever had in his life and that he did not know whether he needed his life without me. His last message was, Farewell, Ava. Thank you for everything. And now I could not reach him, but I had to go to school and take my test, and I texted and called him on the way to school, but he didn't answer. I don't know if I did well on my test, but as soon as I was done with it, I rushed out of class, grabbing my phone in hopes of seeing any messages from Martin. But my phone screen was empty. No new texts, no missed calls, nothing. I began to worry. At first, I persuaded myself that nothing bad could have happened, but by late evening, I was already panicking. I had never visited Martin at home before, but I knew where he lived, so I went there and rang the doorbell. I was terribly afraid that I would see his parents crying, grief-stricken, and devastated, but Martin's parents looked rather sleepy and surprised to see me. When I asked them where Martin was, they told me that he left for a couple days with his friends to go snowboarding and forgot his smartphone at home. They also added that they knew for sure that everything was okay since Martin's older cousin was with him. Martin's mother even showed me a picture that they sent to her. Martin looked very happy, and I'd even say absolutely joyful in it. I returned home on autopilot. The idea that Martin was lying to me about his deep emotional wounds all the time struck me. He just found a sick pleasure in the fact that I worried about him and in how much time and effort I was spending on our relationship. Like a vampire, Martin sucked all the energy out of me, and he enjoyed it. A day later, he wrote to me as if nothing had happened. Then I was finally convinced that I was right, and I dumped Martin. It was not easy, but I was determined. I no longer answered his calls, and I put him on the ignore list in all of my social networks and instant messengers. 